Hi, Steve. My name is Marcos Felix. I'm an FAU graduate. I graduated with a bachelor's in political science. I want to attend Nova Southeastern University. Um, when I was an undergrad, I received an internship uh, to the Public Defender's Office, which was a blessing in disguise. And the way I obtained this internship was back in 2017, I was pulled over for speeding. Um, I admit to nothing, but I still 100% believe that the officer pulled over the wrong person. Um, I was able to, I knew I was going to take contest this ticket, so I learned how to write, how to file motions. I learned what discovery was. I also learned how to foil the officer's uh, dash cam, and I also learned how to object an officer's and in what grounds to object an officer. Um, I went in front of a magistrate, and in front of a magistrate, I objected the officer three times in this opening statement. Um, the magistrate actually told me not to yell in her court because I did object. I guess you could say like in, in the movies. Um, I felt as if the burden of proof was on me to basically show that I was not guilty. And I didn't want to pay that $300 basically fine. So I received a written ruling. And in receiving a written ruling, I went to my professor that night and showed him. And he explained to me that there's no such thing as written rulings in traffic court. Um, weeks later, um, you know, we, I never really spoke to my professors at the time, which I think was one of the mistakes I did as an undergrad. And, and he basically started talking to me. He told me about an internship that was going to open up at the public defender's office and that he wanted me to basically, um, get to see how an attorney works behind closed doors. Um, this was early 2018 at the time. So I can't really discuss on what cases I was on. Um, but if you guys go online, which happened in early 2018, um, especially in Broward, you guys will see what cases were on there. I wasn't on it, but I got to see especially what was behind uh, closed doors and what was going on and how they were defending him and whatnot, especially the media being there. Um, but at this time, I learned how um, I was always the first one basically doing jail visits, you know, meeting with our clients and seeing like, you know, what happened, why they were arrested, what happened, you know, did they know any witnesses or, you know, their side of the story. And I was in depositions. I was in trials. Um, and to me, I saw how much we helped the community of Broward and how people deserve second chances. And I understand, you know, we did defend people that did some outrageous things or, or what the charges were. But like my professor told me, your job is basically to protect the Constitution, help people get a second chance and to make sure that the state attorney does her job and doesn't basically surpass and, and give someone something more than what they should be serving. Um Unfortunately, I had to leave the public defender's office because uh, you have to be sponsored. Like you have to be working, for, you have to be for a school, a school. You have to be in school um, in order to be at the public defender's office. But I was told that if I do get into Nova, I would actually be able to now be a legal intern where I'll actually be able to speak on the record. Um, but for me, like I 100% know that I want to be a public defender. Uh, I took an LSAT course at FAU that 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 they offered. And I remember when they went around the whole class asking, like, what kind of attorney they wanted to be. Everybody looked at me kind of weird when I said I wanted to become a public defender. Um, the books we used was the Princeton Review uh, and the uh, LSAT Logic Game Workbook Princeton Review also, which those books, I think, were one of the worst books I could have possibly used. It did not work for me. Um, I did see your video on where you basically stated that if you want to get... You know, if you want to score higher, you must invest in yourself, no matter if it's sixty or hundred dollars, which I did that. I, I I went and worked as a paralegal at an immigration law firm, and I saw how it really, really, um, what it, it was like a, a conflict between me because I saw how at the public defender's office we did it to help people, um, and then at, at a private firm, I, I felt like I had a really bad experience because my job was not only to be a paralegal but was to call clients to tell them that it was time for them to pay up. And for me, like I, I made it very clear. I spoke to my supervisor and I told him that I was not happy doing that because that, you know, I, I felt like that wasn't my job to call people. I was not a bill collector. My job was basically to do the legal work of immigration. Um, unfortunately, I, I, I had a great time. I did learn from there, but I, I resigned. And as you can see, I'm a security officer now. And I did it because not only was it conflicting with me morally, but it was also something as soon as I was out of class, I felt as if. My brain was right of, out of all the reading I did that day and, and all the writing I did. I, I didn't really feel like studying. Like I just felt so mentally drained after I was done. But I want to, Steve, I want to say thank you for this opportunity you're giving. Um, I do want to be a public defender. And, and, and Steve, thank you for everything you're doing for the LSAT community. Even if I'm not selected, I still want to say thank you for everything you've done for the LSAT community and what you've done for me. Thank you, Steve. Thank you for this opportunity. And, and thank you for everything you've done.
Thanks for tuning into the show. Please subscribe if you haven't done so already to be notified of new episodes as I release them. And feel free to reach out if you need anything at all as you move forward with your prep. I'm happy to help however I can. In the meantime, I wish you all the best and take care.